There are a few different economies in Gwent. So you have the obvious points per card and points per provision, but it gets a little muddy when we start talking about cards that are played from the deck rather than from the hand. In this video, I'm going to quantify the relationship between thinning value, or points pulled from the deck, and regular cards played from the hand. The rough idea is at the end of the game, if you don't thin at all, you don't capitalize on mulligans, none of that, you'll be left with 9 cards remaining in your deck. Since the average provision cost of a card is 6.6, .6, you're left with almost 60 provisions left over by default. If we assume that one provision is one point, that's 60 whole points wasted. So there are three core ways to get value out of these remaining cards, either through mulligans in the mulligan phase, through thinning effects like Daran or Burnabran, or by pooling points with Viper Witchers or Roach. Through mulligans, you're putting cards that are below average power back into your deck, replacing them with an average card. Thinning works similarly to mulligans, though it's permanent. Cards like Daran or Burnabran can be used to remove lower value cards from the deck, increasing the value of the average card drawn. If you mulligan and thin to the point that all 9 of your unplayed cards have 4 provision cost, then rather than 60 points sitting in your deck, you only have 36 unused provisions. Pooling points is just a slightly more complicated thinning effect, where the average value of your deck changes, but you're also getting points. Witchers, for example, thin out cards that cost more provisions than the average card, which decreases the average value of your deck, but you're trying to make points uh, that you get out of the cards make up for the d decrease of the average card remaining. Okay, so we're going to talk some numbers. None of these numbers assume... Uh, they don't take into account mulligan cost. So essentially these are the numbers you'd expect if you played all of your thinning cards in round one, shuffled your hand back into the deck, and drew a new hand of the same number of cards, which isn't totally accurate except in the cases where you either thin to zero or mulligan perfectly, but it provides a pretty good, uh, pretty good framework for understanding exactly how these numbers work. Also, these numbers assume that every card that you play matters, that is to say there are no wasted plays in round one or two, and the points always matter. Rather than looking at the points in each round, we're just looking at the sum total of points played throughout the entire game. Lastly, these numbers assume that you aren't overthinning. Obviously, playing a Burna with zero cards in your deck is horrible value. Intuitively, once all the points are out of your deck, you can't gain any points from the deck anymore. In a sense, the deck is a resource just like your hand or battlefield. Uh, oh, also, we're going to assume that uh, every other card that's not part of the experiment is worth one point per provision. This basically just simplifies the numbers. It doesn't really have any impact anywhere else. So let's start with a little example. So we have the very simple ca first case of Roach. Assume you draw 10 cards, so you start with 99 points, value, provisions, whatever, remaining in your deck, which is 6.6 .6 times 15. And you have 66 points in your hand, 6.6 .6 times 16. Because again, we, we see 16 cards throughout the entire game, and we just assume that, uh, that we're getting all these cards at once for simplicity's sake. Again, we're assuming no mulligans, so your deck is stacked, whatever, Roach comes out, 9 provisions pop out of your deck, and you gain 4 points. So 70 points played. 90 provisions remaining. 70 points. Yeah, 70 points are being played. 90 provisions remaining in your deck because we had four to the 66 that we had earlier. This adjusts the remaining number of provisions in your deck on the remaining 24 cards down to 156, which averages to 6.5 per card, which slightly decreases the average value of the card. So when we draw 16 new cards from this 156 provision deck, we expect to have only 104 total points, which is down from the. Uh, 105.6 that we normally expect from 6.6 .6 times 16. Now with Roach, we also got 4 points, which puts our total played for the game actually up instead of down. So while we only played 104 points from our hand, instead of 105.6, because of the 4 extra points, we're at 108 total, which is 2.4 points more than a standard deck, which puts Roach's point value around 11.4, so per provision, we get 1.26. I have no idea if anyone follows this. So I'm going to jump over to this, which I'm sure just as few of you will be able to follow, but we walk through the math step by step. So basically, when we're evaluating a card, we have a function. This function has four parameters, which are the point total of the play. So in Roach's case, this would be four the provision total of all the involved cards, which in this case is just Roach, so it's 9, the number of cards played, since Roach doesn't really depend on any other card being played, it requires you to play a gold, but a gold is just, it's not relevant to the rest of this, so we're going to say Roach plays 0 cards, and Roach pulls 1 card, because the Roach is coming out of your deck. So first we calculate a couple intermediate values. The normal 
uh, total number of points that you play is going to be 6.6 .6 times 16, which ends up being 105.6, I said earlier? Yeah, 105.6. From the cards to play, this isn't going to be relevant for Roach, because we aren't playing any cards, so we're just going to always play playing 16 cards. Cards remaining is going to take the cards that we played and the cards that are pooled and subtract that from the total number of cards left. Since we're pooling one card, we're going to have 25 cards remaining in Roach's case. For our provisions remaining, we have to subtract the provision total, which is going to be 9 from 165, leaving us with 156 provisions. And then we find the new average value of our remaining cards, which is the provisions remaining divided by the cards remaining. Which, in this case, I probably should have had some prints to walk through this whole thing, but I didn't. So we're going to take 156, and we're going to divide that by 24, which gives us the same 6.5 that I just discussed. Uh, you can't see my calculator, but that's fine. Yeah, sure. <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. I guess I can do the math here. Okay, so we will have... Said it was 156, and we're dividing that by 24, and we see we get that 6.5 number. Now when we're calculating the total, we need to take this new average, so we want the 6.5, and we're going to multiply that by the remaining cards left to play. So we have 16 remaining cards, 16 cards that were not pulled from the deck, and this gives us the 104 number that we saw earlier. However, to get the total, we also have to add in the number of points that Roach had. So now we get 108, which is, again, the number that we had a moment ago. The extra points is just the uh, number of points that we normally get, uh, subtracted on to the total that we have now. So normally we have 105.6, and we're going to subtract all this. Uh, I did this backwards. <laughs> That's fine. Yep, so we get 2.4 as expected. The expected points per provision is the EPPV here, which is the extra points plus the provision total, divided by the provision total. So extra points, we're getting four extra points. The provision total is nine. Uh, or sorry, we're getting 2.4 extra points. 2.4 extra points, that was the number that we just derived up here. So getting 2.4 extra points. We are adding that to our provision total, and we are dividing that by our provision total. I need parentheses, there we go. <laughs> Doing it on the fly, there we go, there we go, that's the number we expect, 1.2666. And then to get the, the actual card value, so this is the final number for basically the number of points that you should see when you look at Roach. We just multiply this by the provision total. Basically, this is the EPPV is the efficiency of a card, and this is the actual value of the card. Oh god, what did I do here? Oh, it's just nine. <laughs> provision total is the defined somewhere else in the script. And here we get Roach is about 11.4 points on your nine provision card. Basically what this script does is it gives us an easy way to quickly evaluate any card that we want to look at. So next, we did Roach. These are all the numbers that we expect to see. These are the numbers that we get. What if we want to look at Silver Witchers? So Silver Witchers, they play 12 points. They cost 21 provisions. They play one card and they pull two from the deck. So after they impact the average card that you have in your deck remaining, and we, we shuffle our hand back, we draw a new hand, we end up that the Witcher Trio is worth about 25 points once you take into account thinning value, which is an expected points per revision of about 1.21. How about Daran? This isn't the card that really pulls points out of the deck, right? It just thins. So how good can that really be? We're playing four points. We're losing 20 whole provisions. We are playing one card, and we're pulling three from the deck. Even Daran significantly increases, like it significantly increases the uh, remaining average in your deck by just playing the one card. 
the total value played increases by about two, with the effective points per provision being a little under 1.1, putting Darren's card value at about 22 <laughs> on your eight provision play that just thin stuff. I have a few more here. These these aren't so important. Silver Witch's pre-nerf, I wanted to a quick look at that. Anyway, let's go back to the big camera, and I'm going to bring up my notes again, and we're going to wrap this up. <sighs> oh, that was really all I wanted to talk about. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you were able to follow. I'm not really sure how to present this in a way that is easily accessible. Yeah, I think that's the right term. It, it's a lot of, like, numbers and math. It's not hard math, it's just a lot of it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you guys on Twitch at my normal time. I hope to do more of these just like talking about things videos. I enjoy them. And I hope you guys get something out of this. See you guys next time.